my name's John Hall, and I started a company called Gone in 30 Entertainment about um, six years ago. And the reason for the name, actually, uh, a lot of people think it's a play on Gone in 60 Seconds, which was a movie about people losing their cars, but it's actually a uh, tongue-in-cheek uh, reference to the demise of the 30-second TV commercial. Um, my background is marketing and advertising, uh, both on the client side and the agency side. And, uh, you know, over the course of the years, I saw um, less and less value in um, getting in front of the, the consumer, getting in front of the viewer's eyes, because they own the viewing experience and they could just fast forward through me. And yet I'm paying big media bucks to try to get my brands back in front of them. And I thought, well, how do you do that? And I really started to believe in um, branded entertainment. Uh, my partner, John Arrowesty, is completely production-based. So between him being all about production and me being all about brands and, uh, and advertising, you know, we're a good fit to really understand not just what the viewer needs, but what the, uh, what the um, network needs too. And of course, what the brand needs. And that's how La Collection came about, actually, was uh, the Bay, a very big brand here in Canada, uh, wanted to um, uh, reconnect with a very, very large audience that they had really disconnected with. Uh, and it's ironic because the Bay actually started in Quebec over 400 years ago. Um, you know, before we had a country, it was basically the country. And to think, despite all of that uh, background, um, that they, from a commercial standpoint, had really lost touch. Uh, francophones were really going uh, towards Simons. Uh, almost anybody, anybody else but the Bay. And the, the VP of marketing came to me and he said, this is, 30 second spots are not going to fix this problem. We need to make a real commitment to this, these people. We have to show them that we really understand their culture. We want to be a part of it. We want to ask permission to do that. And uh, we both said, a television show, but not a tacky infomercial or documentary or so what could it be? And we actually came up, Patrick and I came up with the idea of a branded entertainment show that could be uh, relevant. Well, fashion's relevant and uh, uh, reality shows were really relevant and still are. And we said, okay, well, let's see if we, what we can do. And that's how La Collection came about, really. We want to be uh, on as many different media platforms as possible uh, to satisfy something I call touch point marketing. Uh, I didn't invent the term, but I, I, we really do uh, embrace it as, in my company as something extremely important. Um, I'm forever telling people the television show, the branded entertainment show, isn't where this experience ends. It's where it just begins for the viewer, because the viewer then becomes a consumer. And we want that consumer coming in, in this case, coming into the store. That's another touch point. But in order to make sure that they could get there, we actually needed to use online as a platform to encourage them, give them a reason. And we had three reasons, uh, all really well thought out strategic programs. One was a chance to win. One was get something for free. One was get to know the, uh, the participants on the show better. Three things that we knew really resonated with our, our viewers. So then we get them into the store, but on the way, they're seeing some stuff that's going on, uh, some advertising that's going on out of home. Uh, we're also uh, hitting them on their mobile phones and giving them a chance to download an app, uh, ch again, chance to win, watch excerpts. And one thing that's really big with mobile uh, is see what couldn't be seen on TV. <laughs> so, you know, lots of outtakes and drama and stuff like that. And uh, I have to say that TVA has an, an excellent um, uh, group of companies and, and marketing platforms. I mean, they, they are a machine. And uh, they really ran that part of it because it's, that's, that's their house and, uh, and, and their market. And they really uh, are so impressive to work with. They were, they were incredibly adept at um, understanding who their target audience was and understanding that touch-based marketing. You're, you know, sometimes you're just an influencer in other words, you're telling me about a good show you saw on TV. But I like what you watch, so I'm bound to watch it. 
that's a touch point and it's really important and we don't forget those things and we try to incentivize those types of areas so that it gets taken care of. Now that's, the, that's the interesting thing. Um, when a client needs to do a, a real overhaul for his brand or her brand, uh, or, or almost like a relaunch, which is essentially what this was in Quebec, uh, you'd think, okay, well, they're ready and willing and able to pour more money into it. But the Bay didn't actually do that. They took existing marketing funds and they reallocated it into a show. And that's what branded entertainment does. It allows you to take existing media uh, money, which is being uh, uh, put around purchasing media time for your ads, including production costs, and saying, well, look, you know, we'll cover the production cost of the show, but it's also a media value that you're getting from it, too, because you're on a show. And in fact, I think more powerful and therefore more valuable because you're not around the show that the person tuned in in the first place to watch. You're in the show. And so what they were able to do is, from a brand standpoint, they could rationalize that. Um, TVA and, and all networks, uh, their biggest issue is, wait a minute, we already had that money. So it's just getting reallocated. Okay, so we're not losing it, but we're not really gaining anything more from it. So what we wanted to do to help TVA and what we want to do in helping all of the networks is, let's all, they're not the only brand on this show. We had L'Oreal Paris, we had uh, Garnier, we had Maybelline, we had Listerine, uh, Smart Car. Like, what the intention is to try to get more brands that can also share and therefore underwrite the costs, but also increase the revenue for the, uh, for the network as well. Because they deserve, everybody needs to win in this situation. And then, of course, getting onto the other platforms and the, uh, the transactional nature of this show is uh, Videotron uh, played a big role. And uh, uh, any kind of a print component, which again, uh, Quebec Corp, <laughs> is huge in, they were all able to um, draw upon this brand called La Collection and, um, and really own it and, uh, and, and, and take advantage of it. And what was the, the result? The result was, um, it, first of all, every brand had a, a, a net increase or increased return on investment. Any, any kind of investment they put in was uh, more than matched by their return. And we were talking about this earlier today uh, in, an, in a presentation where sometimes it isn't just about the money, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, you know, what the, the brand wants is they want to know that they got an increase in awareness. Uh, in the base position, for example, they were as concerned, if not more concerned, about uh, some uh, levels of awareness with the, with the consumer. And I just went through them with Patrick the other day the VP of marketing there, uh, where they saw significant increases in what the brands were, um, uh, the brand's presence in the uh, community. So in other words, uh, the, the uh, beforehand across about five different measures, the Bay had this type of a uh, behavior or role in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things in their lives. Um, and uh, the last time they had gone to the Bay was, you know, this time ago. Then after, uh, about into week six of the show, they went back into the market and did some more market research. And those levels were just going, you know, straight through the roof. And then they went in after the show was off the air and they've been able to maintain those levels. So uh, they reconnected. Like that reconnecting was more important for the Bay than just, well, did they come in and spend money right away? They're not going to come in and spend money right. Well, they they will, but they're they're. You want to see them come in, even if they just come in and say, "Hey, this is kind of cool," like, you know, little <laughs> tiny steps. Uh, but Lori, uh, Lori, I know L'Oreal saw um, good increases in revenue. Um, everybody who went in there had some marketing objectives in mind, and they achieved or overachieved their objecti objectives, which is you know all you can ask for. Yeah, <laughs> that's, cool. that's a you know what that's probably absolutely right. You know, I don't know how many times I've heard somebody doing a case study and it sounded fantastic and, you know, and it did this and it did that. And so I guess there'll be season two. No, they didn't want to do it in season two. 
Well, well wait a minute. <laughs> Why not? And and that looks terrible. And and so I to me the proof of a real success is it was so good that everybody wanted it again. And in TVA's case, um, I mean they they have taken this show and they have really taken it up another notch. They're prof they're so professional. They're so good at what they do. They understand their their people so well. Their viewer and. Uh, I didn't think it could get better, but season two is better than season one. Yeah.